Cholangiocarcinoma diagnosis may vary across different regions of the world and may include the following procedures. Generally, patients will go and see their GP or primary care or family physician with their symptoms. The doctor will take down a full medical history, including any previous medical conditions and the details of current symptoms. They may also carry out a physical examination to check for pain in the abdomen or to feel for enlargement of the liver or other organs. Routine blood tests to assess liver function will usually be suggested, such as alanine aminotransferase ALT, aspartate aminotransferase AST, and bilirubin tests. Other blood tests may include those for a protein called IgG4 to check for a condition called autoimmune cholangitis, as well as proteins associated with some cancers, such as carcinoembryonic antigen, known as CEA, and cancer antigen 199, known as CA199. These tests are not enough to diagnose cholangiocarcinoma, so other tests may be necessary. In some regions, the GP or primary care physician may be able to organize these, or they may need to refer you to a specialist, such as a hepatologist, gastroenterologist, or an oncologist, who can organize further tests. Additional tests may include diagnostic tests, where the doctors look at the bile ducts and surrounding organs to see which organs are involved. There are several different ways that doctors can see the bile ducts. They can use ultrasound or ultrasonography, during which a gel is applied to the abdomen and a handheld probe is moved over the area while high-frequency sound waves create a picture of the bile ducts and the surrounding organs, such as the liver, pancreas and lymph nodes. The organs can be viewed using a CT scan, which uses a series of X-rays taken at different angles to build up a picture of organs and tissues, and may involve the use of a dye to help visualize the organs better. The dye will be taken as a drink or injected into a vein. The organs can also be imaged using an MRI scan, which uses radio waves and strong magnets to create detailed pictures of organs and tissues. During both CT and MRI scans, the patient lies on a bed that slides into the scanner. Another type of scan that may be used is positron emission tomography, also known as a PET scan. This is often used together with CT or MRI scans to identify cancer cells and requires the injection of a radioactive chemical. In some cases, more tests are needed and these may be a little more invasive, but sedation is often given. These may include X-ray-based tests such as endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography, also known as ERCP, percutaneous transhepatic cholangiography, which is known as PTC, or an angiogram. ERCP is used to see any narrowing or blockages in the bile ducts and involves having a long tube with a camera passed down the throat to the small intestine and common bile duct. PTC tends to be used to find the cause of the blockage and to alleviate it. This involves insertion of a long needle into the liver from the abdomen. Both these tests utilize an injected dye to improve imaging and small tissue samples or biopsies may be taken at the same time. An angiogram is used to look at larger blood vessels in the liver. A very fine tube is inserted into the artery in the groin and a dye is injected which is absorbed by blood vessels so they can be seen by X-ray. Another test that may be required is an endoscopic ultrasound scan, known as EUS, which is very similar to the process for ERCP, but the camera works differently by taking ultrasound pictures rather than X-rays. A laparoscopy may also be suggested. This involves an incision in the abdomen through which a tube with a camera attached is inserted allowing the surgeon to examine the bile ducts and surrounding tissues. Finally, the biopsy samples taken during some of the procedures mentioned may be used for histological evaluation. This is where the tissue sample is processed and viewed under the microscope to examine cellular changes that may have occurred. Molecular profiling or testing, which is also sometimes referred to as biomarker testing, may be performed on these biopsy samples. These methods look at genes that may be mutated in the cancer. 
This can help the doctors determine how the cancer may respond to certain treatments. The combined results of these tests may be used to diagnose and stage the cancer. Staging is a way to describe how far the tumour has spread and to decide which treatment might be the most appropriate. Different staging criteria can be used globally. However, most are based on the tumour node metastasis system, known as the TNM system. This describes how big the primary tumour is, whether it has spread to the lymph nodes and whether it has spread to different areas of the body, which is known as metastasis.